Hi guys, so we're going to finish up our DNA mini prep right now for plasma DNA. And we just finished up our spin of 10 minutes. And if we take a look at our sample, if I can pull it up, you'll see that there is a bunch of white junk at the back and some clear stuff at the front. And we want that clear liquid. So we're going to very carefully... So sometimes if this spins down a little bit better, there's not this stuff in the front. It's all pelleted in the back, and you can actually pour it. So we're not going to pour it, though, because that's in the way. We're going to very carefully pipette it. And we're going to pipette it into a mini pup column. I'm going to put our mini pup column right in there. Set my P1000 to the full 1000, uh, which is more volume than we actually have, but it allows you to try to get it all in one, one fell swoop. So I'm going to carefully put my pipette tip in, and the top of the liquid has a layer of white stuff that you'd want to try to avoid. And I'm trying to pull up my liquid from the center of the tube, and I'm trying to do it slow so as not to disturb the pellet, which would then loosen up more of the junk that I don't want. So there you can see I have a pipette tip full of that liquid, and that has the plasma DNA that we want. I just inject that right into my mini prep column, and this is now all just waste because it's going to just get tossed. And I may have overloaded my column just a tad. I'm going to see if I can't uh, close this up. Now you might see, if you look closely, there's some stuff that's floating around. Well, it's not the best to have that. We want to minimize the amount of junk that's floating around. It won't kill your mini prep. So I'm going to try to cap this without losing too much DNA. Tap it slowly, might force some of it through. You can see that that thing is dripping down now. And we want all of this liquid to flow through that white membrane right now. And that white membrane is going to be what captures our DNA. So in order to expedite that process, we're just going to spin it down. Um, I'm going to leave that 850 microliter uh, balance in there. That should balance it just fine. And we're going to take our time back down to 30 seconds. So that's spinning down. The, again, that membrane, which looks like on the inside of this uh, tip, it's a little white membrane that captures all the DNA but lets all the other fluids go through. And once it captures that membrane, we're going to do a series of washes that are going to get rid of sugars and salts and really going to clean up the DNA that we have there so that when we elute with water, we're going to end up with a nice clean sample. So I'm actually going to set this one aside later and because once you touch something you don't want to put it back into your stock so it might contaminate everything. So we have spin number one and at this point we want to check and make sure that everything went through. Uh, sometimes it can get a little bit clogged up. So it looks like everything went through and you're going to discard the pointer. Then we're going to be adding in 500 microliters. I'm actually going to top off. I only have one sample, so cut the top off for now. So now we're going to do our first wash with buffer PV. This gets rid of, uh, I believe it gets rid of polysaccharides and other cell gunk that may have uh, come on through. So we're going to take a P1000, set it to 500 microliters. Pull up 500 microliters, check your pipette, make sure there's no bubbles in there. And you're just going to check that. Close. Spin it. I'm just going to do a 15 second spin just because it's a little bit quicker. Cap your PB. And then you're going to find your PB. Bring that down. And we're going to be adding in 750 microliters of PB. And this is going to get rid of salt and other things that might contaminate your uh, mini bread. So we have a. Uh, 15 seconds. Again, you probably want to do 30 seconds on this. Hopefully this will have been enough to get that PB through. Looks like it was just enough. So just card that flow through. Uh, put it back in. And then add your 750 microliters of PB. So pull that up. Double check your tip. Make sure there's no bubbles. Make sure everything is good. And fill it up. And then cap it. 30 seconds. Again, we're doing it 15 seconds for the purposes of this demonstration. 30 seconds is definitely preferable. 
while that is spinning, I'm going to just grab the tube that we'll be eluding into and cap this up. Set that aside. We can label this while we're doing our other spin down. So this is our second wash. We should have a white membrane that is very, very, very clean right now. It's gone through two rinses. And we should have only DNA stuck to the inside of that membrane right there. And we're going to discard our flow through one more time. Get as much of it out as possible. And now we're going to do the dry step. So we just replace that. I'm actually going to remove this uh, 850 balance because it's probably not, uh, it's probably a little bit too heavy. I'm going to put in an empty, an empty column, which is, uh, you want to make sure that you label your balances because sometimes you get confused. If they're unlabeled, if you have two unlabeled tubes and you're not sure what your balance is and what your uh, actual sample is. So we're going to bump that up to 90 seconds. While that's, while that's spinning, that's a good opportunity to label your tube. In this case, I'm going to label this tube with the name of the plasmid, which is PKD46. And then you're going to want to add date. Uh, today is uh, 3-15-2011. And that should be enough information. So this is not a standard plasmid that we use. We usually are going to add the name of the vector and then the name of the part. You definitely want to have all that information on there. If you have multiple clones, then it's going to be vector name, part name, and what number clone that is, as well as the date. So all that information should be on there. Um, so this is spinning down. Let's do a quick review of the process so far. We started with a 2 mil epi tube. We put in 2 mils of overnight culture, and we put it into our centrifuge. Spun that down for 30 seconds. We got a nice little pellet. We discarded the supernatant. Uh, we discarded the excess, the clear culture, the clear LB, so that we left only with that that pellet. We resuspended that pellet in 250 microliters at P1. That allowed us to get ourselves into the PEP buffering condition that will allow the rest of that mini prep to work. And so we resuspended by vortexing that until that that uh, pellet disappeared. And using those two mil tubes. It's going to work a lot better than the 1.5 mil tubes so resuspending. We then added 250 microliters of, what do we add, of P2, which is our lysis buffer that will crack the cells open, that will spill all the guts, and then we gently rock so as not to shear any of the genomic DNA. After we rock it for a little bit, we then add our 350 microliters of N3. That neutralizes all the proteins, gets rid of all the gunk, gets rid of all the uh, genomic DNA, and it kind of precipitates it out. And then we spin it down for 10 minutes after that. So actually, after, to back up, after the N3, you want to gently rock and then slowly go into a vigorous shake so as to break up the white gunk. And then you spin it down for 10 minutes. And then you can take that, that, that clear supernatant that we're left with and you load it onto a tube or uh, column that looks like this, spin that through for 30 seconds, add 500 microliters of PB, spin that through for 30 seconds. Each step, you're, each time you're going to be discarding the flow through. Uh, then your final wash step is 750 microliters of PE. You spin that through and it flows on through. And then you're going to dry this thing by spinning it out for about 90 seconds, and we just did that, and now we're ready to elude. So we can get rid of our reservoir column, our waste reservoir, and we take our column that has been washed with the PB, washed with the PE, and then dried, pop it into our sample collection tube, and then I always elude in 50 microliters of water. So we're gonna grab our P200, set it to 50 microliters. <clears throat> Clean water. You want to use uh, reagent grade waters so that double deionize and autoclave. And you're going to eject your water right under the center of that if you can. So if you're doing a bunch of samples, you have to just have really good aim. Otherwise, if you have one sample and bad aim, you might just go in and then slowly touch the uh, tip to the to this surface and make sure that water gets everywhere. And then you can just let that soak for a second or two. Uh, I think they recommend like 30 seconds. And then we're going to reload this into our centipede in order to spin it down. So I put my tube in there. I note which way this thing spins. So that arrow to the right, uh, I don't know if you can see there's an arrow that's pointing that direction. That tells us that this thing, 
the rotor will spin in that direction, and we want the two tops to be in the opposite direction with it spinning, so that it will kind of trail back, kind of like a, a meteor tail. If it's front, then it will try to go back, and it'll snap off, and it will unbalance, and it's just disastrous. So we just tap it, set it to 30 seconds, hit start. Our water is going to dissolve all of the DNA that is bound to that membrane, flow through into our 1.5 mil happy tube, and from there we're good to go. We can use it for cloning. But before moving on to cloning, we're going to want to map it. We're probably going to want to digest it with eco and bam, see how big our vector is, see how big our part is, and then after that we're going to want to sequence, confirm, make sure everything looks right, make sure all of our pieces are in order, and then we can go on to whatever we need to do, assembly or whatever. So we're finished spinning. You can see that uh, the kind of the elbow of this tube got a little bit deformed during that spin. Uh, it would have been much more so if we had put it in the wrong way. And we have our 50 microliters of the pineapple there. That's our DNA. And that's how you do a plasmid mini-brick.